Larry, do you want to just let us know how you, first how you got involved in the sport of boxing? Uh, yeah, um, I, I used to be a sprinter, um, and uh, to a good standard, um, I was junior England, England, junior England level. Um, I used to train with joint chambers and stuff, and uh, during the uh, but I've always loved the sport of boxing. So during the off season, um, I used to go to to keep in shape. I used to go to the boxing gyms and uh, do do a bit there uh, with my brother, and. Um, yeah, the, uh, the coaches there said that, look, I had a lot, you know, I had, I had a bit of talent. And uh, why didn't I try out boxing? But at that time, I was obviously in love with sprinting. And, um, but I got uh, injured twice, to, uh, two major injuries. And um, the second time required a lot of rehab, which cost a lot of money then. Um, I didn't really have that money because I was 18 at the time. Um, so after taking a long time to, to get back get back the hamstring in shape uh i um, i decided that i would uh, you know follow boxing uh fully and that's 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 basically it yeah. and who were some of your favorite fighters when you was coming up in the sport oh loads uh obviously uh muhammad ali larry holmes uh mike tyson sugar ray leonard uh list is endless really uh yeah all, all, you know all the well-known guys who are known for either their skill or power uh george Foreman is another one yeah all those guys really and where did the nickname the war machine come from uh that came from uh my brother because uh we are massive 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 i can't i can't even describe our big you know how big fans we are of uh, Marvel comics, yeah. And uh, anyone who's watched the Iron Man films will know that uh, you know there's a character in there called War Machine who's played by Don Cheadle in the in the second and third Iron Man, but he was played by Terrence Stamp in the first one. Yeah. Um, so he's Iron Man's partner basically. Um, he's got the suit and everything. So, um, and uh, it, we we obviously used to read the comics and we still do. <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the guy, the character's name is John, uh, John Rhodes, and uh, um, my brother said that, oh, you know, that 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 character is is you down to a T, and uh, and he, and he also said, look, when you go in there, that's exactly what you are, you're a war machine. So uh, yeah, he's the one that gave me the nickname, and it's and it stuck. You, you, you turned pro in 2008, but what kind of amateur career did you have? How many fights did you have? Um, I had uh, 11 amateur fights, uh, one seven, um, and I got to the uh, National Novices uh, ABA Finals. Yeah. And, you know, in, during your pro career, you were known as, you know, a big punch in heavyweight. How... When was it when you knew you, you know you could punch and you know really you know knock guys out? Oh, I've I've known that since I was 11 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know obviously I, I didn't get into many scrapes on the street, but uh, when you do, you know uh, one punch usually finished it for me. Uh, and and it, actually that that actually saved me getting into a lot of fights because when people saw that they realised right if you get hit by Larry that's that's the end of it. <laughs> so um, yeah, <laughs> I kind of knew from then really. Um, I think it runs in the family, though, because my, my brother's, I mean, my brother's an amateur boxer, well, was an amateur boxer, yeah. he's able to come back into it, and he's, he's the same as well, he's, he's got, a, you know, that one-punch knockout power, um, so obviously good genetics helps, you know. <laughs> Tommy, you got a question? Yeah, just uh, coming back into boxing after the layoff, Larry, what, what expectations do you have, mate? Um, you see, the thing with me, and um, I think my, my coach hit it on the head uh, recently for, with me when he was t- chatting to me after a session, after a sparring session uh, with Danny Williams, is that uh, I don't really get ring rust. And the reason, the main reason for that is that I stay in shape all year round. Now, a, a lot of fighters, um, especially heavyweights, uh, don't do that. And, and I, I personally believe that is the number one cause of ring rust. I, I, I honestly believe that if you stay in shape all year round, uh, e- even even if you're not in 
in uh, if you're not doing a lot of boxing training, but you're doing a lot of other training that's keeping you in shape, you know, a lot of cardiovascular and strength training. Um, I honestly do feel that the, uh, the the body will be able to adapt to the rigors of uh, boxing uh, very quickly. And I've, I've actually proven that with the, because I had a, a year layoff uh, before I fought Sexton. Yeah. I think that was about a year, that's, before, that's yeah, right, yeah, between, yeah. between McDermott and Sexton. I put, I put in uh, probably the best performance of my career so far. Oh. So it, it just goes to show you that for me, uh, the layoff would not be would not be a significant factor. And that, you know, all throughout my band, I have trained uh, because it's just that I'm, I'm a gym rat. So, uh, yeah, I've, all, I've I've stayed in shape throughout the uh, 18 months I've been out. So I don't so, I, mean, I don't really expect too much ring rust. So, so you'd be looking to get back into title contention as quickly as possible, Larry, yeah? Most definitely, most definitely. Um, I mean, to be honest, I thought I would need two or three warm-up fights, but um, judging by the way training's gone, uh, my my coach, Dave Pereira, has said to me that he, he, he he's quite happy for me to just have this one warm-up fight. And he, he'd be very happy for me to fight McDermott straight away after that, um, which, I, which, you know, I... I, I, I I, I mean, I always think that of myself, that I'm ready to go, but I always like my coach's opinion. Obviously, that's why my coach is there, um, to tell it how it is. But, you know, if he, and, and I trust David completely, 100%. So um, if he's saying that, and he's a very hard man to please as well, so if he's saying that, then, um, it you know, it must be true. <laughs> and, so, uh, yeah. And, and speaking of McDermott, I mean, going into that fight, you know, with all respect to McDermott, I thought, you know, it was going to be another stoppage win for you. What, what went wrong in that fight? Um, there, there was a num- there, what, there were a number of factors in, uh, that caused what happened to happen in that fight. Uh, first of all, um, I, I, I don't want to place the blame on my former coach, but uh, James Cook didn't really give me any sort of uh, tactics going into that fight don't get me wrong I was in really good shape I was probably up until that point in the best shape of my career um, so there was nothing wrong with me physically uh, I, you know I, physically I, I was in great shape um, but I do remember all throughout that camp I wanted James to sit down with me and um, and uh, watch tapes of McDermott and figure out a game plan and his response to that was just go in there and knock him out. And every time I questioned him as to how I would do that, um, he was just like, just go in there and knock him out. You know, you've got the power, just go in there and knock him out. So that's, you know, for a 12-week camp, that's all I heard. So, you know, you, you, you take what your coach says on board. And that's why I just went in there to, to do, go in there and knock him out without any sort of game plan as to how to do that. And um, so, obviously, with that, game plan in mind i ran into a uh, ran into a shot and uh the rest is history as they say but um also i wasn't warmed up properly uh, before before that fight um and so i i don't think i think if i was warmed up although it was a very good shot that hit me and you know most other heavyweights most other heavyweights wouldn't even have got up let you know uh yeah. wouldn't even have beat the count That's, it makes me laugh when people say oh larry's chinny off the back of that one fight when you know, when everyone sees the shot that hit me, I still got up from that. Most heavyweights would not even have got up. They would they, they would have been on the floor for the whole ten count. I got up, my legs were not wobbling, and I carried, continued. And even the second knockdown, I should have been allowed to continue because I wasn't in bad shape. You know, put my hands up, told the ref I was fine, and the ref stopped it. Not not not, not you know, not knocking McDermott. He did what he had to do, and he won the fight. Fair enough. But you know, we've all seen fights where. Um, the guy's in bad shape and he's been allowed to continue, whereas I wasn't in bad shape and I wasn't allowed to continue. So um, yeah, there's that that's, there's that aspect of it. But yeah, basically, I wasn't given the get the main thing is I wasn't given a good game plan to go in there. That's the main thing for me. Um, and uh, I've always, with me and David, with, with my coach Dave Pereira, has been talk, I've always been talking about that fight. And uh, obviously, Dave Pereira manufactured. Uh, uh, got Danny ready for the two McDermott fights, the second one being a lot more successful. And he said, look, if you were to fight McDermott again, I'd have no doubt in my mind that you'd beat McDermott. Even Danny Williams uh, said, that, said that to me. And um, 
one thing I do like about it, David, as he showed in that Sexton fight, is that he knows how to put a game plan together. Um, he's very analytical. In fact, I, I liken him to a Freddie Roach in that respect because Freddie Roach is extremely analytical and knows how to break down an opponent's strengths and weaknesses. And this is what Dave Pereira has in spades. Um, and uh, so I know that if I was to have a rematch with McDermott, it would be a completely different fight. And yeah, like you said, I mean, in the, in the next fight, it was a, a close fight until the you know the cut stopped it against Sexton. I mean, yeah, that was that was that an eight rounder? Was that fight? I think it was. Yeah, yeah, it was an eight rounder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, if that hasn't been stopped, I mean that. I mean, I think the ref had it really close as well by about a point difference. I think. Yeah, so. yeah, he had it a point difference. Yeah. But re- realistically speaking, um, if ever anyone that's not biased watches that fight, they know I won that fight. The guy didn't land a punch on me. Mm. in any of the rounds, you know, and I was the one pressing the fight as well, you know, um, he didn't win any rounds. I've, I've had all, everyone that was, non, even that on that night, his, his own fans said that I won that fight as I was going back to the changing room. You know, he he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't lay a glove on me. Every shot was blocked that he threw. I landed some punches. I didn't, I, my, my, I didn't land a lot of punches, but I landed more punches definitely than he did. And I was pushing the fight. I was bossing him around the ring. Um, you know, my ring generalship was 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 so much better. So uh, how they scored it one point to him, I, I have absolutely no idea. Um, but even even saying that, that just shows you how close. You know, Sexton was a former Commonwealth champion, and he's a good boxer. He's a very good boxer. He's a very good technician. Uh, so that 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 showed you know people what I was really about. And to be honest. Um, and you can ask Dave Pereira this, my coach. I was ill on the day of that fight. I had a severe diarrhea. And uh, Dave Pereira didn't really want me to fight. Uh, but obviously, I said, look, we've sold tickets. You know, you know, I don't want people thinking I'm bottling it or whatever. So we'll go in there anyway. So I could have put up an even better performance and probably got him out of there quicker if, if I was 100% right, which I wasn't for that fight. Uh, but as if, if, I mean, you can watch that fight back. As just before that fight was stopped, you could see Sexton was going to go. He was blowing hard. He was shipping right hands, looking away from the punch. He, and it, that was our game plan to, to take him to uh, the later rounds and drown yeah, him. Because people yeah. said about uh, Sexton about his stamina issues. Yeah, well, he's, he's got... took him light and stopped. Exactly, him. exactly. Uh, he's, he's got he's got major stamina issues, and I don't think he can. He, he knows how to combat it. Um, you know, it was funny because we, we, we knew throughout the camp for that fight, he was going on his Facebook talking about he's doing 10-mile runs, 9-mile runs and all of this. But the funny thing about it is that, you know, with all the knowledge that we know about training now, we all know that all these long runs does not get you ready for the pace you're going to be going at in the ring. So we were just laughing when we read all that. We were just like, yeah, no problem. We'll do what we have to do and you'll see in the ring. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, that's another fight I won again as well. But, I mean, whether these guys will take it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure McDermott would have a rematch with me. Whether Sexton would have a rematch with me, I'm not sure. Because he went, you know, straight after that fight, I we had an interview ringside and uh, he wasn't keen on it then because he, he knew he saw a completely different Larry to what he was expecting. So, uh, uh, yeah, we'll have to see. We'll, have, well, he's got nowhere to go, to be honest with you. He's, he's not really been, he's been stagnant um, since I've been away. So uh, it might be a fight he has to take. You're scheduled to fight again on the 29th at York Colwari. Is there uh, any word of an opponent or that or anything yet? Um, an opponent hasn't been named yet. I think I'll find out by Sunday who the um, who the opponent is. And that'll, uh, be, a, and that'll be a four-rounder, Larry? A six-rounder. Six-rounder, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I've been, I've been in the gym training. Yeah. So uh, the rounds the rounds are irrelevant, really. If it could it could be a 10-rounder, I wouldn't even care. Uh <laughs> that's how, that's how great you know that's great shape I'm in yeah, I'm, 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 I'm ready to go I just want to ask you about because you know in, in America there's a big issue right now in testing boxing certain fighters being you know caught and is British boxing you know better or worse I mean what what does it have to do to improve do you think um, yeah I've been asked this a lot um, you see the pro- the problem is is that the f- first of all there's no one governing body like there is in other sports yeah so, um, for instance, you've got the British Boxing Board of Control, which which is which is under the WADA rules, the World Anti-Doping Association rules. Most of the boxing uh, associations or commissions in the states are not WADA, not with WADA. 
Um, so this is why they can give someone a nine month ban or a three month ban and a little fine. Whereas if they were over here, they'd get two years straight away. Uh, for instance, James Tony, if he was if he was a British fire and a British license, should I say, he would be banned for life because well, he's, he's, had case, two he's tasty positive, he's tasty positive twice. twice. Yeah. yeah, you know the first the first time he got ninety days, yeah, ninety days, which well, is nothing. nothing, yeah, nothing. And then the second time he got nine months. Now, like I said, if he was a here, if he was a British licensed fire, he'd be banned for life. But um, you know. Um, it's it, over there. It's it's different. And and to be honest, most countries in the world are not wider affiliated. Most countries in the world are not wider. I mean, there was there was a case. I, I think it's still on box rec, but I don't know how true it is. But Ali Adams, who is banned here, uh, is supposed to be fighting in yeah. Dubai the day Dubai, before me. Yeah. Yeah. No, no one's made. You see, this is what this is what upsets me about people having a go at me all the time. Um, yeah, okay, fine, have a go at me. But look at what it, he's trying to blatantly. F- um, you know, go around the ban. I I I, I actually cooperated and got yeah. my ban reduced. He's trying to go out around the ban. No one's making a big deal out of that. If that was me now, if it was me doing that, oh yeah. the big uproar. You know why? Why am I public enemy number one? It's it's not like I'm the first guy to fail a drugs test. Or if people want to go in deep into it, I'm not the first guy in boxing to be caught using multiple drugs. Shane Mosley did it and it's just that he wasn't caught, he admitted to it and what happened to him? Nothing. And he's still, you know... He's still boxed, ri- he never even got a ban. He admitted it to it in court that he used many substances. And he's still got, you know, fans are fine with him and exactly. have always been and, fine with Exactly, him. and no one makes a big deal out of it, but old Larry Olabamuel oh, he's a scumbag, oh, he's this, he's that. The, the guy's gone gone to court and said, done exactly what I've done, but he's fine and I'm a scumbag. You know, it, it, that, that that's why... You know, for the most part, I, I, and you know, a lot of these are a lot of people who were following me as 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 fans before all of this happened and realised that I was yeah. a good guy. And now all of a sudden, the, the, you know, the fact that I'm a good guy has nothing to come into it. The fact that I'm a nice guy and used to interact with all the fans as much as possible that comes into it doesn't come into it anymore. I'm now a scumbag. I'm now this and that. So for the most part, I don't really care what a lot of people have got to say anymore. I mean, if people, if fans, I want to be positive to me, I'm all for that, and I, I'll be. I'll interact with them as much as they want, and you know I'll, I'll 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 continue being like that. But for people who bring negativity towards me, I've got no time for them. I don't even I don't even I don't even see it as constructive criticism because they're just being nasty for no reason, no good reason. I mean I can understand people not liking me being bad. I can understand that, but at least call it the way it is and and don't make it look like I'm the only one, and I'm and uh, you know which is not the case. You know like I said I've just mentioned Ali Adams as um is now going to be fighting in Dubai. He's blatantly going around the band because Dubai, as most countries are, not affiliated with WADA. This is how. This is why there's this this disparity in um in um in in sanctions against bo- uh, against boxers. You know. Um, well, Lamont Peterson wasn't even stripped of his title, was he? It's stripped of his title, but never banned. Yeah. Never banned. Uh, Andre Berto never banned. You know, it, 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 this, this, so that needs to be sorted out first before uh, anything else. And then you can come to the testing issue because at the end of the day, if, you know, they could test people a hundredfold in America. But if they still got the same rules, it's uh, it, it's it's pointless in, in that respect. Britain are a lot better because because they're part of WADA. They follow the WADA rules and they fo- follow it to the T, you know, uh, right down to the letter. So, uh you know, if you do get caught, you are going to be facing a lengthy ban unless you can absolutely prove that it was a genuine mistake. And it's, 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 it's hard going even proving that uh, in Britain. So, um, you know, it, it's um, in that respect, I think I think it, it's 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 much better in Britain. But there's not enough, there's definitely not enough tests being carried out. But uh, people don't understand the lay of the land when, when it comes to these issues, because testing costs a lot of money. And, um, you know, they have a particular budget and they have to stick to that budget. So, uh, you know, they, 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 they have to ration out the tests, so to speak. Um, and that's, that's, that's the, uh, that's the problem in all sports, to be honest with you. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't really see a way around that because, um, testing is never going to be a priority for the, uh, governing bodies in a sport, no matter how bad. Everyone wants to talk about the problem of uh, 
PEDs. Larry, in Nevada, the, the testing ratio for testosterone is 6.1. I think it's 4.1 everywhere else. Do, do you think this gives the fighters maybe a bit of room to be a bit naughty with a 6.1 ratio? Oh yeah, definitely. But even a four point one does. Uh, a four, four, it could, what it is, it's a six to one ratio yeah. of testosterone to epitestosterone. Um, it used to be six to one across the board, and then um, WADA put it down to four to one. But obviously Nevada and uh, I think in New York is six to is six to one as well. Yeah. Um, they don't follow WADA, so they can do what they like. They could have it ten to one if they really wanted. They, you know, they don't follow WADA. Uh, but the, pro- the, the 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 thing is that a normal person is one to one, so they've they've put it because there's genetic variances, um, you know it can creep up to four to one. Indeed, it can creep up creep up to six to one. There has been cases, natural cases, where naturally people have had it six to one, but it's very rare. Uh, so in, in 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 it does it does allow it does allow even the four to one does allow a bit of a uh, bit of leeway to be honest with you, um, but that's why they have also the um, the other testing thing the carbon isotope ratio testing which is uh, a better test for testosterone, but even that's not infallible, you know. So uh, it's it 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 all it all comes down to how much knowledge uh, uh, these guys have when it when they're doping. To, to circumvent tests, and um, you know, if, you, if you've got if you've got a lot of money like uh, the, the elite level boxers have, or elite level athletes have, then um, you know you can hire the best doctors and chemists to uh, you know to, to get around that. And Larry, we've you got like Floyd Mayweather who, who like came out with the old the, the random testing during camps, and you got Nanito Dinero. I think he's the only fighter who's doing. Apparently, 365 random testing. I mean, is that how effective is that really? Because the fans will see that and they say, "Oh, these two guys are obviously clean fighters." But is that, yeah. is that necessarily true? Well, I'll I'll I'll, I'll put this to you, Memo Heredia, uh, who's uh, Marquez's uh, strength and conditioner, and he's also Usain Bolt's strength and conditioner, which a lot of people don't know, um, has gone on record as saying that. Uh, during his time of administering, administering, uh, administering and uh, making uh, performance enhancing drugs, he has made various compounds that are still undetectable by today's testing methods. So that should be able to answer your question. Yeah. Straight away. Well, when you, know. you think when you think back ten years ago and it was undetectable then, science is obviously improving all the time. So who's to say today that there's not going to be some drug out there that it's undetectable, you know. Exactly, exactly. I'm a, remember, I'm a, I've got a degree in pharmaceutical chemistry. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, you know, I've got a lot of inside knowledge on this, and um, all you have to do is pay a chemist um, whatever he wants, and he can make up a new st- undetectable steroid for you, which is what the Balcol lab people were doing with the um, THG. That was an undetectable steroid, designer steroid made for the athletes, so they could circumvent the testing. And that was only found out because one of the jealous coaches, which was Trevor Graham, sent it in for testing because obviously they were all beating his athletes. So uh, they never would have found out about that otherwise. But th- this has been going on since the 80s. I mean, uh, you know, the, all the track and field, you know, the Americans and stuff, you know, it, it's, it's been going on since then. So yeah. it's nothing new. It's just not. It's just that it's a new thing to all the boxing fans now because boxers are now being caught. But uh, it's, it's 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 not like it was something new, you know. This has always been going on. I mean, I, mean sport, yeah. I I have I have inside knowledge that a lot. Like, like, I mean, when I got when I when I was caught, I told people that I know that a lot of well-known British fighters who are a lot of them retired now, um, some are still active, are using stuff. Um, yeah. Now a lot of people have taken that as uh, uh, also to mean that I've I've given their names to UK anti doping. The only case I helped with UK anti doping was the Craig Windsor case. I have not helped, uh, and, and this is what angers me with all these articles that come out saying I've helped with other athletes. It was only the Craig Windsor case that I've helped with. I didn't put any uh, any uh, any other athletes uh, or boxers' names into it. It was only Craig Windsor. Uh, that I helped with, and indeed, it's only Craig, Craig Windsor's case. My name is mentioned, uh, yeah. 
So yeah. I was just, just wanted to clear that up as yeah, well. Yeah, because I was going to ask you to clear it up, actually, because, you know, one of the criticisms I've noticed about you coming back from some people is that they believe that, you know, you've turned snitch on all these fighters to, you know, have your ban reduced. Do you want to just clear that up right now? Yeah, I do want to clear that up. And, and it's, a, it's a thing that I'll be talking to you, Kenzie Dolpin, about to, yeah. clar- to clarify uh, with everyone as well. But the only case I have helped with is the Craig Windsor case. I have not helped with any other cases, uh, doping cases, uh, at all. I have only helped with the Craig Windsor case, and uh, and that and that shows in, in in the UKD transcripts on their website. That's the only case I'm mentioned in, um, you know, and, and and that's the only one I've helped with. And the reason for that, which a lot of people don't seem to want to grasp, is that it wasn't a case of grasping. It was a case of uh, if, if I mean, Tommy, you're from Scotland, so you would know a bit more about Craig, but apparently he's a bit of a naughty boy over there. Yeah. Um, and he was, he, he, this, this was not being said because um, ongoing investigations are still happening, but he was being investigated by the police or, over other matters, which I don't know about. and I don't really want to know about, but um, as uh, because of this investigation, his Facebook was being looked upon by the police. Now, he had numerous conversations with me over a few months about his use of performance enhancing drugs and which I continually told him that I can't help him uh, because he was always asking for my advice and I told him I can't help him but he was still sending me messages saying what do I think of this, what do I think of that, what did you use, blah 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 I'm using this, I'm using that, sending me pictures of what he was using, blah 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 so UK Anti-Doping have a partnership with, with the police which you can check on their website, and you can phone them up. They'll they'll confirm they do have that partnership, in which uh, if obviously it's not a criminal offence to use performance enhancing drugs, it's but they, they do, but they will tell them. Yeah. And, and they've done that in other cases. There's a case of Ian Burns, an athletics coach, who they went to his raid his house uh, for uh, for uh, for cocaine, I think, or something like that. Didn't find it. Found the found the steroids, and obviously they couldn't arrest him for that. But they reported to UKNC Open, and he was subsequently banned. So they sent the uh, Facebook messages into to UK Anti Doping. UK Anti Doping then called me and asked me to to uh, explain these messages. And I and I and I said I wasn't going to explain them because there's nothing to explain because I have not done anything wrong. I have not advised him. I have not given him any help at all. And I t- continually told him I can't help him. So they said right, we we understand that. But uh, if you are willing to write a statement to say that he sent you these messages over a this period of time we can then uh we would then help you out and I, and I said well the help that i want is having the suspension of my ban and they said they're willing to do that because they couldn't proceed with anything unless i say that he sent me those messages you see what i'm saying so yeah. um that, that of course i was willing to do that because i never handed them the conversation um so all this grassing and all of this it's, it's absolutely rubbish and people like to speak in ignorance and you know they they should find out the facts first before before speaking, um, but yeah that that is basically what's happened, and um, and as a consequence of that there was a hearing that took place, and Craig Windsor himself admitted to a hearing panel which is all on the UKAD website that he took uh, he took drug he took uh, anabolic steroids and he had possession of anabolic steroids. Which is both a doping violation. So all because I've heard on his Facebook a lot of times he keeps talking about oh I never failed a test oh I never failed a test how can I be banned when I haven't failed a test? Yes, you pillock, you admitted to it. <laughs> yeah, you admitted to it. In fact, apparently um, because I wasn't at the hearing but I heard what happened in the hearing. Um, his lawyer admitted it for him and the panel then asked him himself to admit it and he did. So um, all of this rubbish. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not really, you know, people should just really take it for what it is. He, he admitted to it himself. So you don't have to fail a test if you admit to it. You know, you're not the only athlete who hasn't failed. Marion Jones never failed a test in her life. Yeah. You know, uh, Lance Armstrong never failed a test. You know, so, you know, let's be real. You know, he, uh, you know, I've, I've heard he's not he's not the brightest spark anyway. So, uh, but anyway, we won't get into that. But, but basically, that's 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 what's happened with that case so uh and 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 um that's how that's how that all came to be basically 
So um, yeah, I've, I've 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 not had any any other dealings with any other case, and um, I never actually uh, initiated the um, the case with Fraser Windsor. But obviously, when they had the info and they contacted me, uh, that that you know, then I proceeded yeah. to help them with that. Yeah, Larry, I, I read a statement from a. Amir Khan, it was maybe a year and a half ago, he said that the, the British testing is very good and you're randomly tested, but uh, I've also read that that's only above British title level. Can you shed some light on that? Yeah, um, I don't know if they're changing their testing policies, but the British Boxing Board of Control really only tests um, British title level and upwards. They yeah. very, very rarely test under that and a good example of that was my case because yeah um i had a southern area title fight uh when i won the southern area title i wasn't tested when i had the english title eliminator with dave ferguson i wasn't tested um and when i defended against uh john mcdermott my southern area title fight i wasn't tested the only reason i was tested for the sexton fight was because they had the info um from uh the operation raw deal by then yeah that um that you know, I was buying stuff uh, from China, and and, and 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 you know things like that. So uh, that's why they tested me. Otherwise, they wouldn't have tested me for that fight, and that's why they did catch me because I was thinking that they they weren't going to test for that fight. Um, so I was quite relaxed in my protocol. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that I mean, you know, that that is what they were doing. Uh, but I think now they are stepping up the testing for for uh, other fights as well now i've heard a lot now that they've tested in the um in the uh prize fires they test a lot now um so um yeah I, I think they might be stepping up that now to other other, other fights like eight rounders and six rounders and stuff obviously like i said the, the budget is constrained yeah. but um i think i think they will be st- testing a bit a, a bit more now Larry, you mentioned earlier about fighters who you know of uh, that have tested, that sorry have used. I know you're not going to mention any names, but can you confirm if any of these fighters have been world champions? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. definitely without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. And Larry, you mentioned earlier about the fans. I, I remember you posted on I don't know if you still do on Boxrec quite a while ago, and you were getting you know a lot of positive you know, responses and people saying what a good guy you are. How has the, you know, the fans been with you since you made your return? I mean, has it, has it surprised you or not surprised you at the backlash or whatever? Um, when I first got caught, it did surprise me. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I knew people were going to have uh, a, a, a negative view of me, which, which, which of course, you know, is understandable. Um, but I thought that the fact that they knew that, you know, I'm a nice person and, I do try and interact. You know, a lot of people yeah. confused, confused using performance enhancing drugs with being a bad person. It it it, it, it doesn't compute. It doesn't. It, it's not this. You know, it, it, you don't use drugs because you're a bad person, and and because they equate basically recreational drug use with performance enhancing drug use, which is completely different. You know, um, but you know, they, I was surprised at first, basically, with the, with the backlash. Uh, I was expecting some, but not to the to the to the point that i got and that's why i came out fighting basically i came out and i might have appeared maybe unremorseful uh but i had to defend myself you know and and obviously knowing what i know about what goes on in the sport as far as the pd issue is concerned um i wasn't going to have any of it you know and i wasn't going to shy away from the issue either but ultimately I, I, I i understood that you know um, a lot of people were angry because they did follow me so passionately. And so I did try to, you know, uh, temper that by, you know, not being as active on the uh, on the forums and also just trying to, uh, uh, well, trying to show remorse, basically, for, for, for what I did do. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, even now, I mean, the ba- I, I'm, I, I've... I've I can see the, some of the bat, some of the. I mean, some people are wishing me well coming back, and some people are being adamantly uh, very belligerent towards me. Uh, but but now it doesn't surprise me 
it surprised me at the first time. Now it doesn't surprise me. And in fact, I couldn't care less if people are belligerent towards me. It affects me not a, it not not an iota, you know, the negativity because it's because it's, expect, it's expected. And I've come to realise now because of what happened in the, in the past, uh, in the beginning, that um, you know a lot of fans are fickle, and, and those people are not true fans really. If they if they can chop and change like the wind, I mean, you don't have to agree with what I've done. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but you can still support me in my endeavours to come back as a clean athlete. Um, and uh, some people have chosen to do that, and I, and I respect them, and, 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 I, and I'm extremely grateful and appreciative of their support. And some people have decided not to, and but I've, 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 I've done it respectively, and I, and I respect those people who've done that. And some people have decided to be, uh, for a lack of better word, scumbags about it, and um, label me every expletive under the sun and hoping that I, I uh, get uh, severe injuries in the ring you know at the end of the day I didn't rape anyone I didn't I'm not a pedophile so for you to be for if people want to be like that that says more about them than it does me really um, and, and that's why I said to, uh, you know for those kind of people I don't really give a to to I don't really care uh, what they what they think or what they you know doesn't really bother me at all I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do and uh you can, they could do what they do, you know, they're going to do. And uh, we've mentioned about the fans, but how how's the response been from fellow, other pro boxers? I mean, has that been good, bad, or mixed? Uh, for the most part, it's been pretty good, actually. Um, you know, uh, a lot of the boxers that I interact with, uh, you know, for the most part, they've been pleased that I'm, I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting back into the sport and I'm going to do it clean. And, um, yeah, they've they you know I've 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 had pretty uh, good responses by most boxers. Obviously, you're going to get the one or two who are, you know, who are going to who are going to disagree with me coming back, and that's that's fine, you know. Um, but for the most part, it's been very positive, and um, you know, I'm very grateful for the, for the, for for my fellow professionals who uh, fellow colleagues who who are, who are supporting me in that in that in that way, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see the, the frustration because, you know, it's like you we mentioned, you know, guys like James Tony and Shane Mosley. I mean, they're going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame when they're finished. We all know that, don't we? And the the same. I mean, I'm just wondering how the same fans who are, you know, giving you a lot of grief. You know, how what do they think about those fighters? I'm, you know, I'm pretty sure they're they're f- huge fans of those kind of guys, like most boxing fans are. So, to yeah. me, it's, it's, it, I don't know why it's just been you that's, you know, because I've saw, you know, a lot of grief that you've been getting. It's like, it seems to me like when a fighter fails a, a drug test, whoever it is, whether it be you or Lamont Peterson or whoever, the first thing is that people say is that what I see on the forums is, oh, these guys are these guys could kill someone in the ring because of the drugs that they're taking. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look. At the end of the day, people have died in the ring. We're in a dangerous sport. There's no doubt about it. But yeah. it, for, for, for them to say, "Okay, oh, you could have killed someone in the ring," well, are, are you? Are they then trying to tell me that people haven't died in the ring before? Yeah. Um, we're in a dangerous mm-hmm. sport. People, people die regardless of if someone's taking performance and asking drugs or not. In fact, I'll be more worried about people who are not prepared, who are going into fights at 24 hours notice. I'll be more worried about them getting severe injury and death than worrying about someone who's got performance and some drugs in their system and causing death. That's that's more of an issue because that happens every day. We all know that. People come in 24 hours notice, not trained a lick and going into a, going into a fight with a fighter who's been training 12 weeks. Yeah. Who's more likely to suffer the, the, the damage than the two fighters who are who have trained for a fight and one happens to use performance and drugs and one doesn't? Who's more likely to suffer injury? You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, so, yeah. so people just take what they want to, you know, they, they see an easy fight. Oh yeah, performance and answer drugs. Yeah, but because it's ingrained this 24 hour thing, you know, getting guys at last minute because it's ingrained in boxing, it's all right. That's fine. It's 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 it's, it's, it's another it's um, another you know a similar thing to this is uh, yeah. talk. I was talking to my mate the other day, and he says, "Don't you find it funny that you get slated for using performance enhancing drugs, which are not illegal in this country?" not illegal yeah and do not cause the misery that say cocaine does but john Donnelly, for instance gets banned for two years for using cocaine which causes an extreme amount of misery and is illegal in this country uh and he gets no stick whatsoever isn't don't you find that don't you find that ironic and i said yeah i do i do 
you know, cocaine causes the, 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 you know, we all know how much misery that causes with the addiction and whatnot. But that, you know, because it's a social, it's a, you know, it's socially acceptable. Yeah. That's fine. But all oh, big nasty steroids. Oh, we can't have those. Oh, you know, uh, you know, even though it's legal and you know people use it in medicine, you know, for, for recovery and whatnot. Oh, that we can't have that. Oh, that's nasty. He's a scumbag. Oh. You know, but never mind cocaine. We all use cocaine in the pub. Yeah, that's all right. You know, it's not performance in arson. Yeah, that's it's, it, you know, and it, yeah. it's the same with it's the same with this um, with this old twenty four hour notice thing. If you give a box twenty four hours notice, because it's ingrained in the sport, it's the norm. Even though it's not right, it's the norm. So so people don't really see that as an issue, even though a, there's a lot more likely injury to come from that than someone using performance enhancing drugs. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. and, 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 and like I've said before, people have died in the ring before. So why are people taking issue with that? Why is it all of a sudden it's performance enhancing drugs, performance enhancing drugs? You know, it's because it's, it's an easy... Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say, you know, it's, you know it's, it's not an issue. It is an issue. But people are making more, more of it than it actually is when there's other things in the sport they could be taking issue with that are, that are, that are, gonna, that are more likely, much more likely to cause injury and death in the ring. Um, Larry, just just in closing, mate, um, have you heard anything from the board on how you will be taken? Sorry, could you repeat that? Before your fights in the future. Sorry, can you repeat that, please? I'm saying, what, are you going to be tested um, before before all your fights now, Larry, or are you going to be given extra testing by the board? Um, well, moving forward. Let 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 me let me. Um try and clarify something as well that a lot of people get confused about in answering that question um the british boxing board of control are not in charge of the drug testing okay uk anti-doping does has been basically british boxing board of control have delegated that work to uk anti-doping okay so when people talk about drug testing and sanctions they really shouldn't be addressing the board. They should be addressing UK anti-doping. The board don't set the sanctions. If someone tests positive, it's not the board that bans people. It's UK anti-doping. So um, that you know, people need to understand that that first. That UK anti-doping. Uh, are two separate be... entities. Yeah. Sorry. They're two separate entities. They're two separate entities. Now UK anti-doping will probably be testing me, you know, probably yeah. more regularly than, than any yeah. other boxer, which is fine. It's expected. Um, I mean, I've already been tested twice, uh, blood test and urine test uh, before I came back. Uh, and I expect so that's going to continue. Um, it might not be after every fight because, you know, people, usually the drug taking is taking place before the fight. So it's, it, could, it could come, you know, at my house. They came to my house to take the blood. Yeah. Uh, so it could be that way. Um, but yeah, I'm, 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 I'm of the mindset that I will be, uh, I mean, even when I sat the board meeting the other day, they said, you do realize that, you know, you will be tested probably more than any other box. And I said, yeah, I do know that and that's fine because I'm not looking to use anything anymore. So anyway, so, uh, that's, 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 that helps to prove to everyone that I am clean and so be it, you know, um, it, it doesn't bother me either way, you know, so. Yeah. Um, I'm quite happy for that to take place. And and Larry, you, you I believe you've signed with Steve Goodwin. You've signed with now. Yeah, yeah. That's that's another thing I want to clarify because the uh, the uh, article that came out said I was managed and promoted by Steve Goodwin. Yeah. I'm only managed by Steve Goodwin. Promotionally, I'm a free agent. Uh, so that that's that's to clarify that. Uh, and so, yeah, so I'm only managed by Steve. And so obviously if I'm managed by him, I can get on his shows, but I could get on other people's shows as well. Um, so promotionally, I'm a free agent, but I'm managed by Steve Goodwin. And uh, Steve, Steve, Steve himself, he didn't manage, he, he didn't decide to manage me uh, very easily. He did, he did speak to me at length and he did go away and think about it. So it wasn't an easy decision for him. Um, so that's why I've got a lot of respect for him. But I know he was actually a fan of me, a fan of mine before the ban, and we did speak uh, a few times before the ban um, uh, about my career in general. And so he was he was the one that I really wanted to handle my career when um, 
when when you know, when I was contemplating coming back, and um, he did he did speak at length with me about everything. We'd, it wasn't an easy decision for him, uh, but after speaking to me, um, he did realise that I deserve a second chance and that I will be clean from now on. And um, you know, one thing he one thing he does know about me, which he loves, is that I've got a great work work ethic. I'm one of the hardest trainers going. Like you, you know, you would never see me out of shape, and uh, that's what he does love about me. And um, he knows that with with that in mind, I'll be able to get opportunities of drop of the hat. I will, you won't hear the excuse for me that oh, I wasn't fit for this. Uh, you know, I wasn't fit for that opportunity. If I'm given enough notice, I'll be ready. So, um, you know, it we, like I said, it wasn't an easy decision for him, but in the end, uh, he he decided that he would he would. Uh, manage me and uh, yeah no I'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to it because Steve Steve is uh, Steve you know Steve what one thing people need to understand about Steve Goodwin is that he's in he's in boxing just for the love of boxing he doesn't make any money out of boxing you know he's his financial services business is, is his uh, is his income he doesn't make any money out of our boxing really he, he's in it he's in boxing because he loves boxing and um uh, you know, when you get when you get with someone like that, it's a whole different ball game because you then you know they're working for your best interests. Yeah. You know, it's not about money; it's about just your best interests. And uh, and and, and, and that, that that's that's to me it's been lacking somewhat in my career. And uh, I'm glad that, that um, and a lot of people have said that to me that they're glad that I've gone with Steve Goodwin. And I think you'll see that a lot. Of, I think he's had he's been inundated with a lot of fighters who want to go with him, uh, but obviously he can only take on so many. So. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it now. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, Larry, I've just got these last couple of questions for you. We've kept we've kept you on a while now. Um, <laughs> That's all right. You could ask question, ask ask away, mate. Yeah. When when did you first you know get confirmation that you would be fighting again on this June 29th? And you know what were your you know how what a relief was it that you know after being told that you you'd be banned for you know four years, which could, could have ended your career, and now you know, being told that you're back again. I mean, what, how relief was that? <laughs> well, I, I found that cause I had to go to the board in Cardiff, um, on Wednesday. Yeah. To me and, uh, to, and that's when I found out I got, I got my license back. Now my band was actually suspended in, um, in April, April 17th or 18th, I believe that yeah, that's, that's when it was suspended. So obviously that was the first part. I mean, nothing could happen unless the band is suspended. Yeah. Um, so there was a mass that that was my first big massive relief. Me and Steve had been talking before then, and obviously he had he had a few dates in mind. And um, because I'm a Muslim, also Ramadan is going to be starting very soon, uh, yeah. probably December four, eighth of July. So I I was mindful of that, and I said if I do get the chance to come back, because as soon as I as soon as my ban was suspended, I put in my application straight away to the board to because i understand that these things could take time um i put my application in straight away to the board to get my license um and obviously speaking with steve i, I told him if i if i'm gonna fight then it's got to be before ramadan um i would prefer to fight before ramadan and um he did say that he had a show then so on the 29th just before ramadan so uh, which was perfect for me so uh, we were working towards that date um you know you know, we were working towards getting the license with that day in mind, and that, that's one of the reasons why we put in the application as soon as we heard the ban has been suspended. Um, but obviously, without the license, that couldn't go ahead. So, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a straightforward thing of oh, the ban's over now, I can go and fight. It was you know now we have to apply to the board, and the board might not take the view that I deserve my license. So, uh, you know, it 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 it, it took a lot. Of uh, for working behind the scenes to uh, to get the board whatever information they needed, uh, and obviously the uh, helping of the Craig Windsor case uh, by me helped a lot in that in that respect. Uh, so when I went on Wednesday to 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 see the board and they they rubber stamped it, it was uh, 
it was a massive relief. I, I, I wanted to, I wanted, I wanted to dance a little jig in there, but uh, in front of uh, fifteen uh, stewards, I don't think that'd have been a done thing. <laughs> so uh, no, it was, it was, it was a massive relief to me. It was a, uh, you know, big, big, big relief. Uh, like you said, since from going from four years and, and contemplating not getting back in the ring ever, really, um, to uh, to now being getting ready to pull my uh, my first show back is. Uh, you know, it's 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 it's, it's, it's a massive. It's like your pro debut all over again, Larry. It, 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 it certainly feels like that, mate. Definitely, <laughs> <laughs> it definitely feels like that. And I, I'm just so excited to get back in there. And I've I've been inundated with, um, you know, ticket you know ticket requests. Uh, I, I'm so grateful for the fans for for you know, for their continued support. I really am. You know, um, I, I can't I can't you know the, the two fans that have stuck by me throughout this whole thing. I'm I, I cannot thank them enough. I cannot thank them enough. And I can't also, there's a few people I need to thank. I need to thank my coach, David Pereira. I need to thank Steve Goodwin. I need to thank also uh, Tony Wyatt and uh, Scott Ewan from Ewan Law. They helped immeasurably. Uh, they're the, they're, they're, without a doubt, I believe they're the best law firm in London. And uh, they, they have helped me so, so much. And, you know, my, my half, half of thanks goes out to them. Uh, but you know, without that's what I was saying. Without all these people helping me, you know, it, it, this wouldn't be a reality. And I'm very mindful of that, you know. So, um, you know, I'm doing this as much as for, you know for them as much as for me. So, um, uh, this 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 comeback is is you know means a means a lot to not just me but to a lot of people. And uh, I just can't wait to get the show on the road, man. And, 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 and proving a lot of people wrong. You know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people have short memories. They just, they, they, everyone harps on about McDermott, 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 McDermott. They, they, they forget the Sexton fight. They completely forget. It, it's very convenient for them. This is what makes me laugh about fans sometimes. They completely forget the Sexton fight. And then when you do bring up the Sexton fight, that oh, well, you know, you're talking about the McDermott fight, but look at him in the Sexton fight. Oh, but Sexton was no, we don't rate Sexton. Funny enough, but you rated him before that, though, didn't you? You know, so this is why. Yeah. You know, and they thought it was. Let's be honest. They, they thought it was going to be an easy fight for him after you know seeing what the Maderma fight didn't exactly, they? Exactly. 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 They they all they all thought Larry was going to get blown out again, and uh, you know that would be the end of it. And uh, they didn't they didn't they didn't understand that I was now changing coach, and how underrated how they didn't understand how underrated David Pereira is, uh, and um, how how athletic I am. And how how much of a learning capacity I have. Remember, I'm still a baby in this game. This is what people don't understand. I turned I turned pro at 29. I, I when I when I was an amateur, I didn't have much of an amateur career. I'm still a baby at this this game. That's this is what people don't understand. So it's not a question of teaching old dog new tricks. I'm still a new dog in this, you know. So, you know, when when you do teach me the right things, I will learn and take it in and implement it, which I showed in the Sexton fight. So uh, there's 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 a lot left that people have not seen, and for people to be writing me off, I just can't wait to prove them wrong. It it, it doesn't even bother me. I mean, before it used to bother me, but now it it just it, it just makes it makes me relish wanting wanting to come back and prove everyone wrong, you know. And um, I, it, and it begins on the 29th of June. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just I'm just hyped up and ready to go. Yeah, definitely. We can you can tell we can tell by your voice, Larry. You're you're excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to say the least, mate. To say the least. You yeah, know. Do you want to just give out uh, any you know ticket information about the show? You know, for our listeners. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, tickets tickets uh, uh standard tickets are thirty five pounds, and um, ringside tickets are sixty pounds. And uh, if you want to get tickets off me, you can either hit me up on Twitter um, at Larry Olubamiwol, or um, you can um. Facebook me um, if you if you happen to be on my if you're lucky to not, enough to be on my personal page at Lanray Olabami Roll and if you've got my fan page then it's Larry Olabami Roll but if you inbox me on Eva uh, you can get tickets from me uh, but yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a very very packed show in terms of uh, fight I mean I think there's 12 fights on the card and uh, it's gonna be a lot of people there uh, I mean the, it's gonna be packed it's gonna be packed because um, not only will I be bringing a lot of fans, uh, Sahel uh, Mohammed, uh, uh, Sahel Mohammed, sorry, will be bringing a lot of fans on his pro debut. Then you've got uh, Leon McKenzie making his pro debut. Obviously, he's going to be bringing a lot of fans. 
uh, is there's going to be a lot of attention on the show for a lot of reasons, not just myself. The uh, the um, top of the bill as well is going to be a good one, uh, featuring many Edwards. So uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a very very lively show for all sorts of reasons. So please get down there, <laughs> whoever can. Please get down to the York Hall 29th of uh, 29th of June. It's going to be epic.